All right then, so before we start to delve into the code of the React app we've just created in the last video, I wanna take a minute to talk about single page applications since that's what we'll be creating and typically a lot of React apps are single page applications as well. Now that doesn't mean that a user on our website will only ever see one page with the same content. It just means there will only be one HTML page that is served to the browser from the server and then we will dynamically update the content on that page dependent on the user's interaction with the website and what URL they visit, okay? So in a multi-page website, a user will typically go to an address like the website.com forward slash index and that is gonna send a request to the server. Now the server is gonna look at this and look at the URL and send back a HTML page dependent on that URL. In this case, the index.html page. Now, when the user clicks on a link to go to another page or just enters into the address bar to go to a different page like forward slash contact, what's gonna happen is we're gonna make an additional request to the server. The server's gonna look at it and it's gonna send back a different HTML page, contact.html. So that would be a typical multi-page application, not something that we're gonna be building with React. But with React, it's a bit different. First of all, we still make the initial request. We might go to the website.com forward slash index to get that initial request, that initial page sorted. So the request goes to the server and it sends back the index.html file. But then when it reaches the browser, React takes over the application. And thereafter, if we click on a link to go to a new page, for example, forward slash contact, then React is gonna intercept that request and it's not gonna to go to the server, but React will handle it and say, okay, well, you go into forward slash contact. I know that you probably wanna see the contact component in the browser, so that's what I'll do. I'll load in that component, and it stops the request from going to the server. So this saves us that trip to and back from the server, it makes the application quicker and slicker, and this is the heart of React, showing different components to the user dependent on their actions all on the front end, and this is the kind of app that we'll be creating later on in the course. So I just wanted you to understand that that's what we're heading towards and that's what we're using React for. But for now, let's take a look a bit more at those project files that we saw when we installed our project in the last video. Okay then, so this is the folder right here, my app that was generated when we used create react app to generate a project. And inside there, we saw all these different folders as well. And I said that everything that we're concerned with is gonna be inside this source folder. This is where we create all of our different code and components. Now, if we take a look in the public folder, this is the index file right here that is gonna be served up by the server when we go to our website. This is the initial index file. Remember, we talked about a single page application getting that initial index HTML file, okay? So, what React is gonna do is inject our components dynamically into this div right here, all right? So, where do we create these components? to get them injected into this div. Well, we create those inside this source folder and this right here, app.js, is a dummy component that React has already created for us when we generated this project. So, you can see right here, this is a class-based component, just like we've been doing in the past, and it has this render method, and inside is this JSX template right here. So there's nothing new here, this is all kind of stuff we've done so far. And at the end of the file, we're exporting this app class right here, that's what it's called, app, so that we can then render it at some point to the DOM. So where do we render this component to the DOM? Well, that's inside this index.js file. So you can see at the top, we import React, the React library, we import also React DOM, much like we added those two scripts in previous tutorials. So we've got those two now, and then we use React DOM.render to render that app to this ID right here and we import app right here from that app component file where we export it, all right? So we're exporting this component, importing it into index.js, and that file is rendering that root component app to this element inside the index file right here, and that's how it's injected. Make sense? Okay, cool. So how do we run this file? Well, the first thing we need to do is cd into this directory. So in your terminal, just say cd, my app, like so. Then to spin up a local development server, we say npm start and press enter. 
and that is going to spin up a local development server for you so you can preview it in a browser. All right, so we can see now that it's running on port 3000 at localhost and it should open up in a browser as well. And there we go, localhost 3000, that is our dummy React app. And this is the component that's been injected into the DOM, that app.js component, all right? So all of this stuff right here is being driven by this app.js component right here. So what are the rest of the files? Well, this is a CSS file for that component. We'll talk about CSS later on, but for now, I'm just gonna delete that file. I'm also gonna go into app.js and delete the reference from it at the top where we imported it because we don't need that anymore. Um, this down here, this is a test file. Now, we're not gonna talk about tests in this series. I will do a separate playlist about those in the future. So I'm gonna delete that for now, just to keep things simple. This index.css, this is a global style sheet for our application. We can add styles in there later if we want to. I'll keep that for now, just in case we want to add styles in. This index.js we've already seen, this is where we render the application to the DOM. Um, this logo thing right here, we don't want that anymore. I'm going to delete that. That's just for the logo in the um, the browser that we saw before. We're getting an error at the minute, but we'll sort that out in a second. We don't need this anyway. Let's delete that. And this register service worker, this just helps with caching our assets and files just so we get a better user experience. So first of all, let's go back into app.js. We don't need that logo there anymore, so we can save that. And now when we preview this in a browser, we still get an error and that's because we're trying to reference this logo thing right here, which we just deleted. So let's delete that as well. Save that, view this in a browser. And now this is a more basic React component right here. Now we've stripped it back. We've deleted the CSS and we've deleted that logo. So let's in fact just delete the rest of this right here. And let's just add in our own little template. So we'll just do an H1 first of all, and inside that we'll say my first React app. And then below that, I'm just gonna do a P tag, and inside there, welcome. All right, so let's save that. And by the way, when we do save it, then it's automatically gonna update in the browser. That's what the, uh, the development server does for us. So we can see now this component that we created is being rendered to the DOM.